What's up guys, we're here at the Victus HQ, about to give every ball player's dream a tour of a baseball bat factory. Let's go. I mean, the first real moment where I felt like we like made it and like we're like a real big bat company was the Harper Hummer Derby in DC with our arena people bat and Diesel stayed up the night before, made this bat like all night overnight, drove it down to DC, dropped it off, handed it to the club in person right before the derby. He went out and won it and chucked it in the air, like texted me afterwards, like, yeah, we did a big guy. Like that was just, this was incredible. That was like the most legendary moment that yeah, whole time. Yeah, the first one we had for sure. So this is our Knox wall. And like you can see the Harper moment right there. It's got a lot of the moments from our history on here. Game five, 2013, Johnny Gomes in that home run. 346 was the batting average of Altuve and Mookie Betts when they won MVP swinging us. And then like Nick Fuel is that uh that's his outline from our guys. So like our knob stickers on here, just my old dog on here. Yeah, it's cool because it's a representation of myself and the other people at picked this and just moments that happened in our past and then we used this design inspired by the Jordan one and then put this onto our movement. My name is Ryan Engroff. I'm the director of water operations at Victus Sports, and right now we're doing spring training bats for O'Neill Cruz. 33 and 3 quarter, 30 and 3 quarter V271s. Each one takes about two and a half minutes. Pop it off of here. And then we do an ink dot test. So you can see these grains right here and how straight they are with the naked eye. But the grain that matters is on this side and you can't see it without an ink dot test. So with this, you can see it a little bit better when it's sanded off, but it's straight and it passes the test. So then we put the tag on and that's O'Neill's specs for his spring training order. When the billets come in, they'll weigh anywhere from 80 down to 100 ounces. So then for us, every weight of billet will correlate to a particular model length and weight. So you have to be able to utilize, like this is all pro wood, but like let's say Vlad Jr., his bat's gonna come out like an 84 ounce birch piece, but then our JC24 from our website comes out of a 93. It all comes from the same supply, it's just a matter of which weight is used on each bat, what essentially. the weight of the billet? The volume of the bat, so like the size of the barrel, the, the thickness of the handle, the length of it, and then you want that specific weight. So it's really just a math equation. You know the volume of the bat, you know how much the billet weighs, and then you want to get to 32 ounces, and you know that 84 equals 32 ounces in that particular volume. Where does that get like done? That gets done here, measured here? Or yeah, it's all on our computer. So our computer's on our CNC's. We have all of our programs on there. Everybody's models on there. There's volume calculations on there. It tells us which billet we have to use to be able to figure out what to do. Let's go check out the backing now. Yeah, so now, I mean, he's got the full set up the wall, got the bat cases, so like this is going to be one of the things we're giving away at, when we do that event later today. And then you can kind of see what the projects he's working on. This is a redfish bat. Like, you look at the scales and the detail, the gold flake on these. This will be coming out soon in a regular bat and also in a fungo. And we got like the cigar bat. Those are tight. Blackjack and then another one of the Warhawks. I'll show you his office too. His office is pretty sick. Questions out there are always, do guys get to use these on the field? Do you ever get to meet these guys? So uh, this office answers a lot of those questions. Yeah, <laughs> so, it definitely does. Uh, 
maybe a little bit to my ego, but hey. <laughs> no, I love it. So, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice little window of seeing the world that uh, that wow. we help create out there. So, you do all the artwork yourself too, like like on like Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, well, I use Photoshop. I don't use Illustrator too Spectrum. much. Yeah, so, like that. yeah. I do yeah. use uh, PlexiSign, and uh, you know, I use a sketch a sketch app as well. Uh, you know, my background is airbrushing. Got uh, it. So you know, I started t-shirts, sneakers, all that stuff. Uh, and you know, I'm involved in being a bad artist. Uh, but when I, because everyone always says, oh, you do everything freehand. And it's like, I do a lot, but then also don't do a lot because everything I create, I have to think about what if someone wants a hundred, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, you know, before. sitting there, you know, you know, I can, I can write someone's name a hundred times, but it's not gonna look perfectly the same every time. So I can create it on the computer and then I can have a stencil for that. Uh, so when I design, that's pretty much how I create, like Uncle Sam there, you know, he's got a little bit of free hand in the hair and all, but almost every single bat starts with a base, uh, somewhere where I can start from. And then, you know, no one's gonna call me up and be like, well, this hair doesn't look exactly like this one. It's right. Like, so, uh, which is cool because it leaves me a lot of room to be creative, you know? Yeah, this is sweet. So, I mean, this is our paint room right here. This is where we put all the colors on the bats. Uh, it's where we do all of our customizations and our coatings and stuff like that. So we got two booths and we got about six people typically that are working on painting. I mean, this is our engraving room. So this is where we put all the names on the bats. And then logo and ink down there, it's kind of the decorating at the, the final stage of everything. Exhibit logo. Gotta beat the bad boys. Going 91 at least. 